Well, hello, my darlings, and welcome back to our channel. I am so glad you are here. Today, we are going to be creating a rose statement gem encrusted bib necklace. I sure hope you'll stay tuned. For this project, you will need some large flat backed acrylic gems, a spool of black ribbon. You will also need some filler gems flat backed as well. You will need a spool of black thread and a sewing needle. You will also need a tape measure. You will need some large roses as well as some crystal flower embellishments. You will need some black felt and a large dinner plate. Of course, you will need your handy dandy tools and please make sure to have on hand a writing utensil, preferably a marker and jewelry and metal glue. Let's get crafting. So the first thing we are going to do is create the template for which our bib necklace is going to lay. And the first thing we're going to do is use a dinner plate to create the neck of our bib necklace. Now, if you notice, you can decide whatever size or shape you would like your necklace to be. I'm going to be going for a rounded neck and of course using the plate as my guide to decide how deep I would want that neck to be. I'm moving my dinner plate up or down to decide. If you wanted to make a bib necklace for someone with a smaller neck or even for a child, you would be able to use a saucer instead to do so but once I have found my placement I'm simply going to take my paint marker and I am going to trace around the edge of that dinner plate once I have traced around the edge of that dinner plate I am going to take my dinner plate and set it on the side because we will not need it again for this project so here you have our neckline once I have my neckline, I'm now going to sketch the rest of the necklace with my paint marker, making sure to stay as symmetrical as possible. Now, of course, we're sketching this with a paint marker, but by the time it is time to cut this out, we will be able to decide what parts we need if we need to cut outside of the line, inside of the line, etc. But to make sure now that we're bringing our necklace to a close point in the center, I am going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure from one end of my collar or one side of my collar to the next side of my collar and I have what 11 and a half inches so half of 11 and a half inches or the center of 11 and a half inches is going to give me roughly five and three quarter inches so I make my mark at the five and three quarter inches and now I'm changing the orientation of my tape measure and I'm deciding how deep I want my bib necklace to be whether nine or nine and a half inches and I am marking the center of my necklace once I have decided where I want my necklace to stop as well as where the center is it is simply a matter of closing that necklace in or rather the sketch of that necklace in and shoring up my other lines now that we have shored up the lines of our bib template, it is simply going to be a matter of taking your scissors and cutting that template out. Now for my purposes, I am going to stay on the outside of those lines and cut that bib necklace out. And then if I need to make any or rather I should say more specific changes once that bib has been cut out of the felt then I will go in and cut what needs to be taken off so I'm going to continue this process off camera and then I'll be back to tell you what our next step is 
So now that we have cut out our bib template, we are now going to attach our ribbon to our bib necklace. And to do this, we're first going to measure the length of ribbon that we're going to need. I am going to give mine a generous 15 inches on either side. And what this is going to allow me to do is either situate it on my neck as short as I want to wear it on any particular day or as long. So once you have measured your ribbon, it is simply going to be a matter of cutting that ribbon off two pieces one for either side making sure both of them are the same length and to ensure that we're working with what is going to look like in the end a finished project we are going to score the edges of our ribbon so instead of having one blunted end we will have two pointed ends Okay, so once you have scored your ribbon and cut those out, you can set your tape measure to the side because we won't be using that anymore. And then you're going to take your needle and your thread and you are going to start to attach your ribbon. Now, I am simply going to go in with a very simple stitch where I am going to go in with my first stitch Take my needle in, loop it up and under. And then for my second stitch, I'm going to go behind where my first stitch went in and come out in front of it. What this simple stitch does is allows that thread to lock or be knotted in place already, even as you are working. Additionally, to ensure that I'm securing this thread even more, continuing the pattern that I started, when I come out again on this third time, I'm going to knot the ribbon on top. So I'm locking the ribbon not only from the bottom or rather as I stitch, but as I come out with each stitch. So I'm just going to continue this process until I get all the way around. And then I will show you with the most reliable <laughs> tug test just how strong this ribbon will be once we have secured it with our needle and thread. So here it is. I have come all the way around with my needle and my thread and I have secured this ribbon to our bib necklace. I am going to knot it one more time on top. I'm going to make one final stitch and lock it one more time rather or knot it another time on top. And then of course I'm going to cut off the excess. But here you have our reliable test <laughs> of me tugging on that ribbon and it is absolutely 100% secured. So here we have our completed template. In addition to our very reliable tug test <laughs> and it is now time my darlings for the fun part which is the embellishments now I'm going to be using a combination of these fabric roses um, a smaller silver rose accompanied or flanked by two larger purple roses and I'm going to place them on the bottom of my bib necklace I'm also going to be using these two crystal roses that I had from another project that we created a few months ago and then I'm going to be using these flat back crystals to fill in any space that is left once I have placed my major components on. Now to place this rose on I'm going to be using the jewelry glue just so we're not mixing glues with the E6000 and the jewelry glue. I'm just going to use this one permanent glue that I have on hand which is my jewelry glue. Placing some beads strategically in place and then on top of that I'm going to go in with our hot glue pretty much the way we have done everything else on this channel. We know that hot glue is going to give us our right now adhesion while that permanent glue is going to cure over time and so I have placed 
my rose on the bottom of the bib necklace hanging off just a little bit and then I will flank it on either side by the purple roses now this acrylic rose like I mentioned before we use this in I think it was our bed of roses project and I will link that below so that you can see how we used it and how now I'm repurposing this item but again just going in with a few beads of that jewelry glue and then on top of that jewelry glue going in with a foundation of our hot glue and having placed the foundation of hot glue simply finding my placement where I'm going to put this on the top of our bib necklace where it meets the ribbon applying some pressure and allowing that to dry for a few moments of course I'll place the other one on off camera now the last part of this is I am going to use my flat backed gems to find a pattern that I like like I said before this is the most fun part of this project where you can go in you can play with your gems you can see which way to best place them that is going to take up as much or as little space as you would like um, if you come up with a pattern that you may not have necessarily fallen in love with for the first time or after you have laid it out of course you can shake them off and start all over again the possibilities are endless and the sky is the limit but I'm pretty sure that that square gem that I have up there is what I'm going to go with and so before I start to play with my gems I'm just going to show you guys how I'm going to secure this to our bib necklace and and again same process going in with a few beads of that jewelry glue it goes a long way so you really do not need much and then topping that off with the hot glue so that we can continue working finding my placement trying not to burn myself which I was very unsuccessful in doing so be careful my darlings finding my placement and then applying some pressure all right and then if there are going to be any empty spaces I have decided to use these flat backed half iridescent pearls to fill in any extra spaces that there may be so I'm going to continue this process off camera I'll give you a glimpse into what I'm doing but then when I come back I'm going to um, make sure that our necklace is cleaned um, I have gotten rid of all the glue fronts and then I'll be back to show you what our finished project looks like Well, here she is, my darlings, our rose statement gem encrusted bib necklace. Isn't she absolutely gorgeous? By using different mediums as well as some new products and products that we have repurposed from other projects, we have been able to complete a cohesive unit that will be sure to add to the functionality of your white tee and jeans outfits during the summer or top off your turtleneck ensemble by the time fall and Christmas or winter season rolls around. This piece is not only gorgeous, my darlings, it is actually absolutely functional as well. I think I would have to say my favorite part of this project would have to be, of course, the iridescence. Those of you who have been with me for a while know that I like gems. I like white. I love iridescence. And so I love the fact that the iridescence in our flat backed acrylic gems play very well with the iridescence of our pink and ivory pearls as well 
well as the iridescence that lays throughout that acrylic rose that we have repurposed from another project. And so my darlings, in the comment section below, please be sure to tell me how you would use this piece to enhance one of your outfits. I would love to hear from you. <laughs> Also, if you have found any value in this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. To my Danny's darlings, I just would like to take the time to thank you for all of your love, your encouragement, your comments, your questions, your feedback. Please know that none of it is wasted. To those of you who may not yet be Danny's darlings because you just happen to stumble across our channel today, kindly be sure to consider joining our ever-growing community of DIYers as we learn from and craft with each other on a weekly basis we would love to have you and of course before I sign off for today I just would like to leave you guys with a motto to our channel which is simply this say with me my darlings why buy when you can DIY and so my darlings my loves until the next time we meet again please 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 Take care of yourselves for me. Know that I love you all. <laughs> Bye now.